When I cut my fingers off, it was on a Saturday afternoon, um, and I I had gone to the hospital. From there, I had actually decided when I was in the emergency room that I'm going to make a set of fingers for myself. I originally asked a lot of people for some help, and I sort of was turned down before you could even open up a discussion with people by saying it's impossible. And the more people told me it's impossible, the more I decided that it is possible, you know. And I started investigating things online and all the different prosthetics that are available, and none of them are trade friendly and none of them are, are functional as in returning functionality to your hand as a tradesman. I first started thinking about prosthetic hands and fingers when I was 12, 12 or 13 years old in shop class and terrified of power tools. Arvin played a very important role in this. His ideas and stuff were great for the project. I have a background in mechanical special effects, primarily making mechanical props. And one of the things that I built in the past were, were essentially giant puppet hands. Richard contacted me after seeing a video of one of the mechanical uh, prop hands and uh, offered me the opportunity to collaborate with him. We started uh, experimenting with 3D printing and utilizing the machines that MakerBot provided. We got the printers and then Armin was already back in the US. I would do sketches and scan them and, and send them over, email them over, and then he would script something and send it, the file back and I'd print it and then I'd say, no, hang on, this is not working and change this and change that and it was up and down. The impact that utilizing the MakerBot Replicator 2 had upon our design process was, was incredible. It dramatically increased the speed at which we could uh, prototype and try out ideas and gave us the ability to both hold a physical copy of the exact same thing even though we were separated by 10,000 miles. Originally it wasn't a consideration to, to help other people, it was all just about me at that stage. And then as we went along and so one prototype became another one and so on and so forth, I saw that this could help many other people. Liam was born without fingers. Um, having two previous kids with all ten fingers, it was quite a shock for us. Liam's mom, Yolandi, she, she sent us a message on Facebook, because we had now put this and opened up a little page on Facebook. And she contacted us with just a little message, and then I sent her my cell phone number, and then we had a chat, and she said, you know, she'll do anything to be able to try and make Liam's life easier. So I hadn't at that stage even thought about a complete hand or amniotic band syndrome was a, that's the first time I've ever heard about it. I've never seen it, you know. And she came along and I had a look at all of this and we decided, you know what, let's just make a complete hand. It was something I never thought of that, you know, a person can do. And to see him the first time grasp something and have it in his right hand, it was amazing. Put it down and then pick it up again. <laughs> now pick it up again. Yeah, that's right. Clever boy. The hand that we developed for amniotic band syndrome children and adults um, is driven by the motion of the wrist. So they don't have the fingers and generally they have a, a, only the palm and no thumb. So it's attached to the hand, a hand cap and a gauntlet and to that is attached cabling when you you, you bend your wrist forward, it makes the fingers close, and you bring it up, it opens the fingers. Everything, other than three different, three different things, are made by the maker bot. All the fingers and the phalanges, the tips, the thumb, the knuckle block, the wrist hinges are all printed. The only thing that we then add to it is cabling, the hardware, which is all stainless steel, and then the thermoplastic. That you cut the sheet, the, the piece that you need, the size, and you put it into hot water and it goes translucent and you take it out and then just moulds to the exact size of your hand and stuff. Waldo's mom phoned me one day, I was actually doing a woodwork job on site and she said to me she saw us on SABC TV. So I saw everything there, emailed the guys, got the numbers and contact Richard. We chatted and we set it up and they came through one week and I had an occupational therapist help us with the cap. We made the cap everything, he had a lot of dexterity problems and the OT gave him some exercises to do and uh, by the time he had left us he could already move his wrist a whole lot more than he originally could. He's really keen on wearing it. I think if he could go to bed with it he would also do that. It makes him more, I'm now some, something special, I'm someone special. <laughs> with the maker bot, as he grows, all we do is we scale it up and print him another one and the hardware just gets taken from that, put onto the new hand and then we'd like those hands returned so then we can then 
filter it on to the next person. It actually brought some tears to my eyes to know that he'll be able to function like normal other kids with two hands, be able to play ball, um, play cricket, play rugby, drive his bike, everything like a normal child, hold a glass with two hands. So it was really amazing and to see the joy in his eyes also, it made me really happy. It's fun to have, awesome, and I can do almost everything with it. When you're busy making one of these hands and you make a mistake and you break something or you drill it wrong or something like that, you just go in, set up the machine and you print a whole new set of parts. And this 3D printer actually makes it a lot easier for Richard and Robohand to do the printing. The MakerBot and being able to swap files up and down via the internet cut our, our, our sort of prototyping down from a week down to 20 minutes. It was incredibly fast. For a first time user, I think he's pretty amazing. And you can see that he's, he's open to the hand doing things that he wants to do. Dylan's father contacted me and said that he's actually a friend of Liam's dad. And he's been watching it all and he'd like to give his son an opportunity and see if I can help him as well. We are one of the first people to test out this new piece of equipment. And as I saw today and on the finished product, my boy's very happy, which makes me happy. If somebody has a child that's got amniotic band syndrome and wants to make their own hand, we actually believe it's possible. On Thingiverse we've put all the, the files and everything needed. All they have to do is get access to a 3D printer, print out the hand, put it all together. We suggest you find an occupational therapist to help you with the, the gauntlet and the hand cap, but we also don't think it's impossible if you want to apply your mind to actually do the whole thing yourself. I am actually quite excited about having a rubber hand. I'm excited to try cricket, golf and go swimming with it on Tuesday when we're going to play cricket and we're going to be able to catch, catch the ball there right in now. When I saw the little face lights up, your heart just skips a beat, you're so proud, you say it, all your emotions all at once. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Maybe Robohand took the 3D printing world by surprise with what we've done with it. But if you have a look at the broad spectrum of it, I think that printing a mechanical device that can aid you when you've lost fingers is just, it's a tiny little part of it. It's, it's, a, it's a big, big picture, this 3D printing. I always thank Richard and Makeabout and Robohand for the opportunity and everything that they've done to us. I can't explain the feeling I got, you know, that there's still people out there helping others. And yeah, I'm, I'm quite amazed by what this printer can do. I can pick up stuff. I couldn't, just I couldn't imagine what it would be like if I had it. I can throw a ball. My friends think it's awesome. I like my robot. 